Hi, I'm Annika Johnson from Al Johnson's in Sister Bay. I hope you enjoy my new video series called Door County Girl. These are stories of my life, the people and places that I love, and of course, how we all survive here in Northern Wisconsin. You can come back as often as you like, but don't forget to subscribe to Al's YouTube channel. I'll be posting lots of really cool new videos. So let's go. Well, here we are, Kit. Another episode of Door County Girl minus the Door the, County the, Girl. The actual girl, oh, yeah. So hopefully we're not disappointing people out in the audience. No, I don't but, think so. Uh, They'll get used to us. Yeah. We, so what we call us the Door County looking, dudes. Have a couple cocktails. <laughs> we'll be really good looking by the end of this. Uh, yeah. So welcome to Door County, dude. I am excited because I've been wanting to do this well since the summer. He's here. been trying to twist my arm to do yeah. this one, and I was like, no. Because I love I love the classic Swedish. You know, Kit is all about stuff. classic things. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a great item. It's just that I don't eat uh, so, anchovies. Or so, I <laughs> this is this, so I'm getting stuff ready this morning. I have this epiphany of like, could I do this vegetarian with mushrooms instead of the main ingredient? Could I, I, I think could it really I, needs that. I think it needs everything, yeah. yeah. It's I, like there are some things that just don't taste right with a little bit of anchovy paste in it. Well, I was thinking maybe some Marmite. Oh, yeah. Like mixed with mushrooms, and so you have the texture of like the the fish that we're gonna Maybe be using. After this episode, I'm gonna look. I, it up. I'm, this is what I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you with. To like, see if I can if find can one, do this, a yeah. duplicate because it, it, you know what? It's it, even if I don't participate in some of the the meat eating things yeah. and stuff like that, I still think it's fun to be a part of the whole situation when you have classic foods. And I'm gonna force him to chop and do all that <laughs> stuff too. So, so, so we look forward to that. So we are making. And I'm gonna kill this. I worked out it this morning with Freddie. I'm like, how do you how do you pronounce this? If it is Grubhora. Grubhora. Which I probably destroyed and I know we've actually our Swedish viewership is like grown a lot. Oh, so yeah. yeah I Maybe they, they watch us for all, the mistakes all that we your make. relatives. I'm sure this I could imagine them just like this is a comedy thing for Well when I hear it, you know, I think of when I was little and we my mom taught me a song on the piano. It's called Gubanua, which basically means old man or old man Noah. Okay. And I think that's where the salad comes yep. in because when you said the name, it's Guba is must is old. It's, yeah. it's, that's what it translates to. It translates to old man mix. Okay. So like for me, I sort of envision some guy that's older that his wife is like, she's on vacation with her sisters and he's home by himself and he's digging in the fridge and, <laughs> what and can I like, make? I'm going to throw something on it. it. It really is almost like a smooth rod, like where you put, you have some great ingredients and you put it on like the crisp bread and that's how we're going to eat it today. Um, or you can use like rye, like really hearty rye bread or something sure. like that. But uh, basically almost like a variation of an egg salad using some like one of the most original uh, Swedish ingredients of all time the anchovas yeah and these you have to get this particular style or brand yeah. we've tried it with other things doesn't work you're not gonna be getting some oil cured anchovies no. and dumping it in there yeah it's 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 hard to explain even though it says anchovas it's like anchovies it truly isn't an anchovy um, not like we're in America are used to. So we can't supply you with these unless I think you're it's, in the house. But yeah, well, you, can, you can buy them at the boutique. We'll have yes. them in there. And, and during Christmas, it's a highly sought after item because but it's, it's one of those things we can't send out. I cannot right? send it uh, online or anything like that. So you'll have to, to do your own uh, due diligence and, yeah. diligence and to see if you can find out where, you know, detective yeah, I, work. I don't even think you can go to an Ikea and get them. That's, that's wow. yeah. I think you'd have to find like a real specialty, specialty food store. Yeah, I've never seen them. I mean, we've had a shipment ourselves, so. Yeah, I'm trying to remember, and I, you know, I get around every gourmet store in Chicago, and I usually don't, I don't think I've ever seen them in there. So. When, when you gave the analogy of you envision an old man, you know, making his own stuff because his wife isn't at home, there's a great, great movie, not to get off track, called Kitchen Stories. If you get a chance, watch the movie called Kitchen Stories. It's about an old Norwegian guy that lives by himself and an old Norwegian Swedish guy is there sitting in a lifeguard chair mapping his uh, movements in the kitchen because they're trying to write a uh, tutorial how to best design a kitchen for old single men. <laughs> 
but it, it sounds it. stupid, I but I, I shared it with Norbert Bly, and he watched it four times. He liked it so really? much. It, yeah. is, it, is it something you just pull up on yeah, like Netflix I, I, or something? I'll bet, or I'm what? willing to bet you could get it on one of those two, but I'm willing to bet it's one of those. It's on Kitchen YouTube. Stories? Kitchen Stories. Is it... Is it like subtitled? Uh, yes, it is. It's probably like some some like super classic movie from Scandinavia. Well, where, I tried like, to get my mom and dad to watch it, and they said it's nothing. It's just watching this guy walk around the kitchen. I said you have to give it about a half an hour, and the premise of the movie, and it's got a twist in the end. It's fantastic. Oh, it's like that, or watching an old guy fix sobs. Yeah. I could do that all day. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show, I know we showed this trick before, so I'm going to show the, the, the dishcloths. We're going to be chopping something and mixing something. So if you get these wet and you put them underneath the... So you really want to get these Swedish dishcloths saturated so they're floppy, like you're going to be rubbing something down, but you can just put them right But even saturated, they're not, they're not dripping they're with not water. Dripping. Yeah, I, and I, I wrung look, them out. Now we got a nice secure surface. And even surface. here, this is not a wider baseball, but it's not going to... I slide everywhere. And yeah, and this is it. perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to start chopping. I think I'm going to have you, let's do the, we can do it in any order because okay. it just all gets mixed together. So we'll do the onion since it's up here already. So you We're going to do about like three, three tablespoons of onion. But again, all these can be changed to whatever you want. So if you like onion or even say you wanted a little, you know, roasted garlic in there, you could do that also. Um, you know, another thing that I think would work really well just because I like Acidity, though we'll get some with the, this ingredient here, um, like a little, even a little bit of vinegar or apple cider vinegar would be really great. Like you're making a slaw, or like mustard, like Swedish mustard. I've been addicted to the IKEA's just yellow mustard. And Is it as good as the slots used to be? It, or it'd probably be better. It's like on sandwiches. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I it, it's so funny because it just comes in like this yellow like squeeze bottle thing, and it looks like it's like the American. Which I do like, like the other brand, you know, the American just yellow mustard. But sure. it's like, it's way different. Like it's actually it sort of has a brown tinge to it. It's got like this just subtle sweetness, but there's not like, if you look at the nu nutrients, there's not that much sugar in it, but it's just a really, really great mustard. I, I went there and I loved it so much that I like from previous times visiting, I bought like four of them because I went through it so quickly. The dill, is this a rough chop? Yeah, just rough chop on dill. We're, you're gonna add some to the salad and then we're gonna save some later just to make it look a little, a little zhushing at the end here. Is that gonna be enough yeah. onion? I think so. Let's just, we'll dump these in the bowl now so they're- Out of the way? Out of the way. So I'll put it up here. Or... So it's funny, cause I, you know, both Rolf and I have cooked in the kitchen together and I have to say, I, you know, I was like in my 20s and you're, you're only 10 years older than I am. Sure. So, but you were like there, and you want to cut up the hard boiled eggs. Okay. And you know, it's it's interesting, at Al's, because it has. If you work there, you you sort of learn from the next. It's like almost being in a you know like a teaching facility, because I think they're like as soon as you can pass on your knowledge or teach somebody something else, I think it's because you, then you just don't have to do it anymore. Right. And then, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and a lot of times, you know, I, I remember uh, younger kids too, and they come in there and they're like. Did you have an awful lot of faith in me? I said, why? And they go, because you told me how to do something, just walked away <laughs> and didn't instruct me after that. I said, well, it's kind of baptism by fire. You yeah. just got to kind of sink or swim. Well, I think <laughs> one thing that helped me out was not only just having great people like Randy and you oh, and, yeah, and yeah. Uh, Kirk and, and, and Freddie, actually, too. Freddie's yeah. been awesome. Yep. Um, you know, instructing you, um, one winter I was there, I opened up one of the old pancake ovens and there was a whole collection of like the original Cordon Bleu textbooks. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And I, I like, cause there's a lot of downtime during the winter. I, I just devoured them and read them all. And I really, I think that's sort of what started my passion to it. Like being cooking in the kitchen. And yep. Stuff like I that. remember the same. So when we had, when hamster worked there, Steve Anderson, yeah. And uh, he had a cookbook he brought in every day, the professional chef, oh, the which is CIA. yep, which was kind of our Bible, and and sometimes he would just say, I'd say how to make a bechamel sauce. He, you know, page three seventy four, read it, you know, mm -hmm. and then you would try making it in different thicknesses and stuff like that, and uh, yeah, I remember. And so I, he took the book with him when he left, but I went on. Uh, eBay and found that exact book and, and Freddie goes, you know, they get they have a new, modern new version versions. of that. <laughs> and I said, yeah, but this is the one I learned under, and it's That's as cool. a nostalgic thing to me. So, um, and then the, I think the other misconception, well, maybe not, but like, 
I would have to say 98% of the stuff that we make is all, you know, made in house. It's all prepped. Oh yeah. yeah. We have a small army. I think it's a big misconception. So like, I'm going to give you, I'm going to ask you how many times do you make meatballs in a week? If you're a prep cook oh, it's on a busy summer day. On a busy day, it's every day but Sunday, pretty much. You make meatballs every day? Um, now we have them because uh, we've got an extra guy back. There. Otherwise, what it used to be was once a week. And the reason I did it that way is because I hated cleaning the meatball machine every day. But now we're back to every day again because we're, we're, we're so much busier. Yeah. And we, we're lacking in storage. So. Yeah. Um, but remember, we used to keep them in a huge, super huge tub, and then uh, the cook would say... You know, put on about 100 meatballs. Well, that was nothing now. Yeah, you know? no, that's... Now you're like, you put on, you know, 700, 800 meatballs. Jeez. And, uh, and... So then how much batter do you guys make back there? So every pan- every, every day we're making batter, and we probably... We're always a day ahead, so we probably make at least uh, one of those batter cans, six gallons each. So I'd say we make 10 of those a day. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think until you go into the back of Al's Kitchens, you don't realize that there is literally and it's, it's a like, small army of it, And it's like an stuff. orchestra going on. Yeah. And uh, everybody, every section has their own conductor. Yeah. And you can walk by and you can see this guy's doing one thing and he's anticipating the guy leaving the next table so he can go over and set his stuff down there. You know? Yeah, and the prep cooks are super vital. I know, like, the line cooks, I mean, it's, it's hard being on the line because you're just... I mean, they yell in the orders and you're just making stuff. But, like, if you don't have the supply, I mean, it's just like... It's like artillery for like, you know, you just need to have that stuff come in there. And a different language at times too, because there's, uh, you say things that it's like, well, what did you mean by bust one? You know, it's like, well, break out a new batter. Why don't you say, can I have some batter, please? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, there's definitely some sayings that are just in Al's vocabulary. And sarcasm is thick. Yeah. Really, really thick. And that's, that's one thing I tell, like, we'll have sales guys come in and they're like, they hate me in here. They're, they're like, <laughs> it's like, no, I'm they like, don't. If they don't tease you, then they don't like you. Yeah. If they're teasing you, that means they like you. So, like, you gotta, yeah, because yeah, I think we always, you know, give people a hard time. Oh, yeah, when they Some walk people take in, it a little sure. personally, but yeah. then they get used to it. Okay, dump the egg in All here. Right. And then we'll move on to the, the secret ingredient, which I'll tell you about. Uh, also, because I had a weird dream about it last night. So, like, this is a tin, and I had a dream that I, like, just, like, sliced my finger. Ah. So, I'm actually going to do this over this, because if some juice does come out, it's it gets added to the... You want it there. You want the juice. And, in fact, you want to reserve the juice. Oh, man. Reserve the juice, because you're going to want to add some more liquid in to do it just to your taste. It always so, reminds me, like, even sardines yeah. and those old Tom and Jerry cartoons. <laughs> you want to but pluck them out. And... It's like you could just smell. So it's a spice a spice blend that they, they sort of cure them in here. And I'm going to have you pull. You want me to do this? Or you... Go ahead. We'll see. Okay. Are, we, are we dicing these? You're going to dice these, too, because okay. they have to go in there. And the other beauty is these... these have salt in them, so you will not add salt to this unless you just love salt and you want more. Um, but even even the other secret thing that I watched Freddie do, I hope he doesn't mind me giving this away, is on his in his Janssen's Temptation, he always does dump the whole liquid into it, and I mm-hmm. think it does give it that really great flavor. Because otherwise, it's sort of cream, and I mean, you get it from the anchovies, but you don't, you know, it. I think it's what makes it unique in flavor and stuff. Like, you know, even like a Caesar salad yeah. that you, you always go, what is that hint that I'm missing, you know? And then you find out that, oh, they, I didn't put the uh, uh, anchovies in there. So okay. more than that yeah, or right about that's there? that's good there, just as long as we got a nice we'll chop to it. So there. we're going to mix it. Yeah, it's going to get all dumped in. Okay, and then sour cream can just get scooped out. There we go. Put right in. And so, what is this here? So, this is actually creme fraiche, but I know it's it's a hard ingredient sometimes to find in mm-hmm. general. I've been I've been reading I've been reading this book, and they're like you can make the best creme fraiche, and you can make it at home, and it's like super super easy. So, it's just heavy whipping cream. You did you, you do like for the batch they recommend. I did a half batch. I'll I'll tell you the half batch. It's just one cup of heavy cream, and one tablespoon of buttermilk. And you stir them together, and you cover them, and you let them sit on your on, out all night. 
I know everybody's getting crazy and stuff like that, but what is, what's happening is it's actually fermenting and mm -hmm. culturing, and it's sort of an early precursor to cheese. You can sort of see how that is, and that's all I did and let it sit out. If it's in a cooler, if your kitchen's cooler, your house is cooler, you're gonna need to wait a little longer, but it sort of just pulls together and then you have the best tasting creme fraiche. It's, I mean, not to, you know, for, for people who make it, but it's just two ingredients. It's a lot better than some of the other stuff that they, they add food stabilizers. And, sure. You know, something that could be on the product. Yeah, and when I'm in a pinch, you know, I, I'm going to try this. Kid, that's what I like about Kid. He's willing to experiment with things. Uh, it kind of reminds me of that Mexican table cream. Yeah, it's like creme, creme fraiche. They're actually uh -huh. sort of different things. And I think it's actually they just use different quantities of stuff. And yeah, it is like like a like a crema. So like this kind of yeah. thing, like in the summertime, a nice fresh strawberry dipped in there. Is I mean, and out you can once world. you have it, you can keep it in your fridge for for a pretty decent time. But once it comes together, you know you're gonna refer. Oh, once I have this, yeah. this would be gone in a day. Yeah. And easily. we're just gonna do this is three tablespoons. You can go ahead and just kind of uh, heaping yeah, ones. Yeah, you can just sort of decide what you want to do. And it's it'll be it's a little looser, but in a good way. And there we go. Then all we need is a little white pepper. We're just gonna shake it. Yeah, you can just just don't pull an owls here. No. Okay. What he meant by that is, my mom was a big fan of white pepper, so we always have white pepper on our little salt and pepper shakers yeah, at good. the tables, and people often shake the salt shaker, pepper shaker in their hand, and they see, well, that looks like salt, and then they just douse their eggs in it or their French fries in it, and they take that first bite, and white pepper has kind of like that. Uh, uh, horseradish shock to it if you're not used to it, but uh, we've we've since gone to black pepper yeah. on the tables because we it's, got so much food back saying, "Oops, so I put too much pepper on my I, eggs." The first time I ever visited Al's when I was older, I did it once when I was a little kid, but I did the same thing where I put like a lot of white pepper on it. I'm like, "Wow!" And it was like, I mean, I love pepper, so it didn't was it really bad? But I had it. I'm the guy that puts my eggs on top of my Swedish pancakes after the lingonberries and syrup on there, and then I just eat it all together because I sure. think it tastes really yeah. good. And then I over pepper it. And then it's sort of... Wreck the pancake. Wreck the pancake, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so stir this up for me. All right. We're so just we're folding just, it in. Yeah, just fold it in. I mean, it's just going to make sort of like a nice egg salad, basically. Sure. Here. And again, you said no salt because there's so much salt in the... Yeah, you won't need Plenty it. of salt in the I did. Uh, I grabbed sprats. a fork just because I do want to try it um, and just make sure that we're... We are uh, at, if we need to add some more of this to it. And really, it, everything in this can be to taste. So, you, you know, like if you're like, oh, I, this, this is great or this isn't great. And I'm going to try it. I know Ralph's, well, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm Ralph's <laughs> vegetarian version. Well, you I, can do the I, egg. I'm going to try it with the egg, you know, yeah. let's kind of avoid it. Like when my wife brings home a pepperoni pizza, I just pick up the well, pepperoni. Well, that's the one thing that I thought about this. Like, you wouldn't really need too much of the other thing because it's, sure. it's, but it is sort of the main flavor. It, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that is. And listen, I've had uh, Worcestershire sauce yeah. and all that stuff. So I know I, I've had Caesar salad. And so. then you can, you can see how this looks right now. It, like, it looks very like liquidy, mm -hmm. it will sort of suck up, you know, like when you make that potato salad or you make that egg salad. Yeah, they're often they say reserve some of the, uh, the creme fraiche yeah. for later because you're gonna need to add it. So I'm gonna try a little bit right now. Let me get a... It's really, really good. Right where it's at, you're gonna add a little more I'm juice. I'm gonna add a little more juice. Um, you, get, you get it sort of on the back end mm -hmm. and it, I think it's sort of like a, sort of like a cloviness, like it's... Really? Yeah. Okay, and can you grab me that blue container over here? So this is another exciting thing that you can only get in the boutique now. We just got these in yesterday. Kanakabrad. Kanakabrad, but this cool the tin. container, the yeah. tin, yeah. So really, really awesome. Can you grab me the little, the little the tray? tray yeah. Yep. These lovely serving trays. So just pops open, you can keep your, so we sell the wedges. I think it's easier for people to buy. It's not so much of an investment to get than the giant one. The big wheel. But yeah, so you got this like cute little container. So we're gonna do, we'll do two for now. Do you wanna just serve up some of that with that spoon there? This is really my favorite bread. I, I, I like it as well. I love Canuck. In fact, I love the uh, sort of, where you just get, I actually put butter on it and then just like the, like the Swedish farmer's cheese on mm -hmm. it. So yeah, I just spread it on. It's just gonna be, so 
a lot of times this is actually consumed during midsummers as an appetizer. So you could you could cut it into smaller pieces so they're more bite sized and more portable. I like the bigger pieces because if I'm going there, I'm going there. And at midsummer, you you know you're going to be having a little you know a few drinks. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're going to be having uh, some best. Which, which leads so. me to my next part. Wait. You didn't bring some aquavit, did you? Oh, I might have. <laughs> so, and then the, people may not realize it too. We actually have a pretty good collection of aquavits in the boutique as well that, that are for sale. You want to just chop up some for decoration? For decoration, please. And I know uh, Bryn makes her own versions yeah. of. Uh, Aquavit. You, and you can buy the, our, so we have a spice mix that you can just add vodka to and it will basically, it, it sort of steeps in the, in the seasonings that we have and you basically will make your own, your own Aquavit at home. Yeah, so you get the fresh dill on everything. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try to take a little piece of knack of bread and I'm just going to see if I can just... Get the flavor profile down. Kind of avoid the anchovies the best I can. That's right. But at the same time, I'm very curious. Okay. We have oh, a little dill on there. So, and I love the way Aquavit pairs with food. So my like, sister was here. She go, oh look, mini food. <laughs> she loves that. <laughs> well, skull. Skull. Holy cow. <laughs> really good. <laughs> I would have never guessed. No. It is, like I could eat like 10 of these. This is like the Swedish pizza that I've dreamt of right here. And sometimes nice. and sometimes when I have Johnson's Temptation, there's a little bit too much of the uh, herring flavor, so, or, the, or the pickled, um, or the, what do you call these, sprats in there. In there. Try the, try the Aquavit oh. then, because I think it really works. Like it just pulls those great Aquavit flavors, a little caraway. A little dill in there, and that works so great with this food. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking this is a total winner. I wish uh, I'm, I'm excited for the our, our crew here to try because I'm going to be honest. My sister and I, every time Kit brought it up, and if Kit left the room, we were like, we turned our noses up. I'm not going to eat it, <laughs> but I, I begged. I think she would try. I don't think you, the fish is really like just in Janssen's temptation. You don't even really know that. No, it's, it's in there, there, but it yeah. probably needs to be there because, like it's I say, a uh, it's like a Caesar salad. Yeah. You need that little bit in there. I mean. Well, we finished another Door County dude. Oh, girl. With dudes. With dudes. <laughs> we miss Annika. We can't wait for her to come back. I'm sure people are trying to get a look at me at least. They no. really loves Rolf. Here, but until so. then, uh, yeah. we'll polish off this bottle of Aquavit. <laughs> get ready for the next episode. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And don't forget to hit to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, Door County Girl, and you can keep up with all the things that are going on yeah. at Al Johnson's. And uh, like I said, too, I know I sort of, in a past episode, I went back and said, hey, we, we may offer just a special, like, sort of incentive if you if you subscribe to our subscription people. And we, we may give people a nice, like, maybe a nice Christmas uh, video oh. or something like that. I don't know. We'll figure that one out. Yeah. But, yeah. but you won't find out unless you like and subscribe. You unless you subscribe. Okay. <laughs> Skull, everybody. Hey, though. Hey, though. Mm. See, you're hating on my. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I judge too early. Thanks for watching Door County Girl. Don't forget to subscribe, and we will see you next time.